Now, we're all told that we need to listen to our customers, but what if you're not actually meeting them? That's the challenge for most of us because we're trying to get people to our websites, build lead funnels. Maybe we're on podcasts, for example. So how do you listen to customers that you can't see? Well, my guest today is going to help us to answer that question because he's the chief revenue officer for a company called ScoreApp, which is one of the world's leading quiz providers and really helps entrepreneurs around the world and content creators to listen to their customers and get them warmed up and ready to sell. Maxwell Nee, welcome. Join us from Singapore. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you're more than welcome because I'm a big fan of ScoreApp. And obviously, you've got Daniel Priestley here with his key person of influence has created a huge reputation for himself, but also for ScoreApp. So I'm looking forward to hearing about score app but also i've got some questions because i personally haven't succeeded with score app and so i'm going to ask you some questions that i'm hoping you can answer for me because i'm sure that many entrepreneurs would love to use quizzes but they've got some practical questions to answer so maxwell first of all tell us a little bit about you know your background with score app which now has over six thousand customers doesn't it but when you started how many did it have Zero, uh, pretty so, much zero. Yeah. Well, when I invested, yeah. Yeah. So that's a great. So you've been at the beginning, which is fantastic. Yeah. So tell us about your your story with ScoreApp, and then what problems it's solving now. Yeah, good question. So I'm the chief revenue officer for ScoreApp. So my responsibility is to uh, share it with as many people as possible who might benefit from using our our software. Uh, now our software, our solution. It's, we have about 6,000 plus clients right now who are coaches, consultants, uh, service providers, online entrepreneurs, authors, uh, content creators, like the one that's, ones that you see now, you know, Ali Abdal, Helen, Christo, Jay Shetty, you know, people with millions and millions of people on their followers, um, audiences. And what we do is we help all of them to, to generate leads, right? Now, what's a lead? A lead is someone that's put their hand up and they've said, hey, Jim, I really like what you have to offer. I'm potentially interested to buy what you have to sell, right? So that's a lead. You want to know as many of those people as possible because um, when you have a big abundance of leads, then sales and everything else, business growth is is easier than, than harder, right? Now... How do we do that? Like, how do we help people to generate leads? It's it's all based on the principle of a win-win, right? So if you want someone to put their hand up and, and to give you their information, their name, their phone number, their email, you know, sometimes even where do they live, uh, to let you know, hey, look, Jim, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you to call me if, um, if you know, to see if, if it's a fit for me to, to buy your service, then you need to offer them something. For them to give to be willing to give you that right now uh score up helps you to offer them what we call a a quiz funnel so a quiz funnel is where they answer a series of questions could be five could be 10 could be 40 and um, at the end of those questions that survey that assessment they will get a personalized report right which will help them to measure where they are now and where they want to go so it could be for example um you know do the uh the podcast readiness scorecard right so how ready are you to get a podcast out in the audience today and you know mr customer might be three out of ten ready so then jim you know you would have a a very problem solving conversation to potentially call mr customer and say hey look mr customer i've seen that you're a three out of ten uh in terms of podcast readiness how would you like it if I could share with you some ideas to get from three to 10 and then you go from there. So that's, that's one example of a use case that most people use. So you've mentioned that it can be used for sort of a quiz funnel. My experience with the quiz was that I don't know how to ask the right questions, Maxwell. And I think this is one of the fundamental challenges because I've introduced quizzes and score up specifically to a number of my clients on the coaching side and most of us fall down on what questions to ask and how to ask them so do you want to take us through maybe 
you know, what makes a great quiz? Uh, because it, it, this seems to be the challenge to not make it too salesy, to me, to make it so that someone feels that they're getting something out of it. On the other hand, you don't feel like you want to give away what you're selling. So how, how does, how do you sort of re reconcile that? Yeah. Well, let me start by giving you the, the magical pill <laughs> solution first. So the magical pill solution is, um, you know, semi recently we've incorporated chat GPT into the, into the platform where, um, it'll prompt you to pull out, you know, who you serve, how you help them, what's the goal of your quiz, what you'd like it to be. And then the AI wizard will write your concept and your copy uh, about six to seven hours worth for you. So that's the, the, the shortcut on the map, but in terms of what that AI actually does, what it does is that it, it, it speaks to an outcome, you know, everyone, no one wants to do a quiz. They want the outcome. Right, what's the outcome? The outcome is find out what you know type of entrepreneur you are, find out what um, type of uh, body type you are, you know, for your personal training goals, find out uh, your podcast readiness, find out how much a podcast could benefit your business. So people want to know like a personalized outcome um, for for their specific problem. So it, it speaks to a problem and then it identifies an outcome. Okay. And I'm going to tell you that I have one and it's called, how do you rank as a podcast guest? 10 questions with instant answers, Maxwell. So I am actually drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm really trying this as well. When you talk about outcomes, how do you get into the mind of the person that you're trying to to sort of pull through that funnel because one of the challenges is you don't you don't know how, sort of maybe where they're coming from in terms of their customer journey you don't necessarily know what they're looking for when they arrive on your website and i think that's certainly something that i found as a challenge is you know where do i start with the questions the ai was great but what i also struggled with was are those the right questions they're great questions but are they the right questions how, how do i kind of test or or check if I'm asking the right questions? Uh, well, well, the questions should just represent the outcome, right? So the, I think the, the more prudent question is, um, is your outcome what your clients are willing to pay for? As long as the answer to that question is yes, the outcome that your uh, quiz is offering is something that your clients are willing to pay for to get to a 10, to get to a yes, to get to a 100% um, satisfaction, then, you know, the questions are, are secondary. The questions can, can float around that. They don't need to be that, um, you know, that well-written. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So if you focus on the outcome that you're trying to get for them, and then you're trying to identify, if you like, for them where they're at on that journey against the outcome that they want to get. And what are you finding are the best? Is it to do sort of a yes, no questions or is it ABC? Are there any, is there any guidance there, Maxwell, on the kind of questions that people should be asking? I know you said that the question is less important, but is there, is there an impact? Because one of the challenges I think that I found with my clients is we've ended up feeling like we need to become experts at, at writing questions. Uh, and is, that, is that something that we need to really be worried about? No, I wouldn't say, um, you know, you need to become an expert, but th think about it like this. Um, when, when you or anyone else is in a, uh, a discovery conversation, so like a sales conversation, a chemistry call, discovery call, you know, that, that call where you're talking to a potential client as to whether or not um, they want to work with you, all the questions you ask in the first 15 minutes of that call are the same questions that will work in your quiz. So, you're, so everyone is already asking these questions um, because you, you would need to ask them in a sales and a discovery call situation to work out if you can help this person. Okay, that's a really, really good piece of guidance because I think that's one of the challenges that most of us have faced is we love the idea of the quiz, but then we feel like we've got to become quiz builders. Uh, and as you say, 
if you're basically taking people, if you like, through your normal kind of needs analysis part mm. of your conversation, right? You've got some pretty impressive size sort of content creators in there, like people like Jay Shetty. Can you give us maybe some examples of how maybe someone like Jay's using it, uh, using Score App? Yeah, so he's using um, like multiple ones. So he might have a video uh, where uh, the video is about purpose, right? You know, like, are you living a purpose? Are you, is your battery charged? Is your cup full as if, as if you're living your highest purpose? And then he'll have a, you know, measure your, your purpose scorecard. Right, that that's that's in tandem of of that video. It's a call to action for that video. So, or he might want have one about uh, work life balance, as an example, and then we'll have the work life balance scorecard. You know, measure your your work life balance happiness score or the happy happiness one. You know, really simply. So it really is that just like that specific outcome or that specific nugget. You know, like you don't want to have I'm going to fix everything in your life quiz. You just want to have that one, um, one product on the shelf that they could buy, and then theme it around that. Okay, and uh, and you've mentioned there something that I'd like to sort of uh, dive into a little bit, which is where do you put the quiz? Is that's the next part? So let's say you've built the quiz and you're trying to get an answer to one key question, which is also really good guidance because I think I probably overcomplicated my quiz to try and find out too many things at once mm. what about uh where do you propose or suggest recommend that people are collecting these answers from so it it doesn't really matter where people are collecting these answers from but you know the exposure you want is is really anywhere Right, so people put them in their in their email signatures. People put them um, as a call to action on a video, on an Instagram post, on a on an Instagram story, a Facebook post. People post them as as their own posts on on, on LinkedIn uh, or Facebook. You know, obviously you can run ads to it as well. Um, so there's you know about ten places you can you can throw it on there for for free to to start bringing in interest you know another thing is discussion groups right so you know like a facebook group or a whatsapp group is is also a a really good place um you know the the idea of the quiz is that you're not there to to bother people by by trying to extract information out of them you're there to to offer them a um a piece of value because when they get that personalized report, which is the outcome of the quiz, that's going to help them in their journey. So you're not, you're not asking questions. You're actually giving out reports and the questions are just like a mean to an end. And I think that's a really great distinction that you're using the, the score app to serve rather than to sell Maxwell from the, from what you're saying, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Exactly. And that's a really, really useful distinction as well, because I think that that changes the stress that you put yourself under in terms of trying to build the killer quiz. You're really trying to build something that helps people along their journey. You talk about the customized response, Maxwell. And by the way, just for anybody, Maxwell's actually got a book on building the great score app. So at the at the end, we're going to give you a link, the scorecard marketing book, which is on my list of books to read, I can tell you. So uh, at the end, we're going to give out a link to a free, a free hard copy, I think, right, Maxwell? We're going to actually send people yeah, a yeah, copy yeah. of the book. If, if you're based in the UK, we can definitely get a hard copy out to you. If you're not, then we might have to get a PDF out to you. Um, but we'll, we'll share that link in the show notes, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's absolutely fantastic. Maxwell, let's just move the workflow forward so we've got our quiz we've understood that it's really solving or helping someone to answer one question and understand where they are on the journey give them some guidance some some inspiration what would be in the customized report Let, let's just go into that level of detail what would be in that customized report that someone would receive when they've answered those questions yeah so that, that there's a few different 
uh, categories. So there might be categories that are measured on a scale. So it might be, you know, a percentage score, um, you know, your 72% uh, to achieve, achieving that goal, that outcome, your 32%, um, you know, here's how to get from 30 to 100, here's how to get from 70 to 100. Um, and then the other one is where you're, you, you put people into buckets, right? So they might be uh, a personality quiz and there's five key personalities, right? The entrepreneur personality quiz, and you could be one of five. So that's, that, that's another example as well. Um, or there could be a, a mix rating where there is, um, you know, five personalities, but you might be 75% of one and 25% of another. So you can actually go into that type of detail as well. Okay. Uh, my experience with the writing of the report, the content management system on the back of ScoreUp is really very elegantly built. So congratulations to the team. I think Steve Odi, I think, is is um, leading that development team, I think. Is that right? Is it Steve's team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Steve's the CEO. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can also customize the report according to some dynamic content, can't you? So it's not just a standard report. Each question can give a a response that's aligned to the question that people were being asked so you can really get very granular can't you maxwell in terms of the the report that you give people uh, yeah. which i think is really very handy and then people are receiving that report where are they receiving that they're receiving the report online or they're getting it as a download how is how are people actually receiving that material yeah so they'll get it through an email uh and then it'll also um you know they can obviously download it from the email as well so people have got quizzes and there's a, I mean, I, I won't, uh, you're in charge of selling. So, but I will say there's a free version so people can start and learn. And, uh, but what would you say are some of the best practices that you've seen for people in terms of building a quiz into the overall marketing? Because it doesn't stand alone, does it? Do you think people need to be offering the quiz as part of a promotion or is it just on the website what have you seen as being the best way to integrate the quiz into part of an overall marketing strategy maxwell yeah so the quiz is a a conversion event so it converts um a, a listener so it's, it's great for podcasts it converts a viewer so it's great for for videos it converts um you know paid traffic um, but there has to be traffic. So anywhere where you've got traffic going to a paid website, an email, or whatever, that's where you've got eyeballs going towards something, then you want to make sure you're not missing out on those um, viewers or listeners uh, converting into, you know, a lead. Right. And that's key, isn't it, that is part of a, it's part of a chain, part of a conversation, isn't it? It's part of the customer journey as yeah. opposed to an orphan, an orphan activity. It needs to be part yeah. of something, doesn't it? Exactly. With um, the, the score app, what about if people are working across geographies and across languages, Maxwell? Because that's uh, something, you know, my audience, I have listeners all over the world. In fact, we're very, very mm -hmm. blessed. Is score app working in in multiple languages? How how do you help people to handle that? Yeah, so it is, and the AI wizard as well um, also works in multiple languages. So some of our um, so we have partners who who share score app, and some of our partners that um, generate the most interest sharing score app uh, only share in French or Dutch. Uh, so yeah, it does very well in our, in, in all languages. Yeah, that's great because they, so many companies are crossing boundaries, crossing geographies, right? That uh, mm -hmm. we need to integrate whatever we do across platforms and across geographies as well, which is fantastic. And in this age of, you know, TikTok and so on, is there a way to make the score app and the quiz as a video? How, how do you embed the score app, for example, you mentioned into instagram How, is it a link only or do you in some way help people to 
to make it a bit more dynamic. Yeah, it's a link only. Right. Link only. But but it's it's a link to a to a page, to a landing page. So, you know, you can incorporate that page into a website. Um, you know, you can incorporate it into an email, uh, you know, and into an image. So it, it is a it's a landing page. Okay. And let's just think of we look at the whole sort of chain, we've We've looked at the kind of quizzes we create. We've created the um, the the event where we help someone to understand where they're at with their with their journey. We've looked at distribution. What about integration? Because people have got a CRM, maybe they're running HubSpot, maybe they've got a website on WordPress. They're using a mailing application, like so many of us. We have all these these different platforms. With Score App, if I'm collecting those email addresses from people that have entered how would i then use score app to be part of my overall if like sales engagement process yeah so it, it collects leads you can also use that as a crm so you could hold the leads there you know the emails and names for numbers um you could then plug that into for example um uh, an email automation software that sends out emails uh, or you plug it into Zapier if you want, you know, a bit more exotic type of integrations. So you definitely have options, yeah. Okay, that's really handy then, is it? Because you don't want to build another silo of of leads somewhere. And I think also, um, does it help in terms of writing emails against the answers as well? Or do people have to go in and sort of write and follow up with the when people have got a score? Uh, ask me that question again. Oh, so when people have when people have filled in the quiz, and we're seeing their results, then you want to follow up, obviously, with the person who's filled mm -hmm. in the quiz. So just sort of completing that whole process, Maxwell. I can see the results that someone's filled in. What what what's best practice? How does Score App help us to reach out to that person? Because that's not the end in itself. The the quiz is, you say, an event to get them to convert. So what about the outreach? We've talked about the mass mailing integration, but is there a way as well for a score app to help people to, uh, the, the owner of the score app to write directly to those people who've taken the quiz? Uh, yeah, so you can automate that, right? That That's just like an email, but it depends on your business model. So, you know, if, you're ha if you've got a business model where your product is a bit more higher ticket and a bit more higher touch, then you might want to consider calling that person uh, or sending them a link for them to book a call with you. you know, that, that's what works well in one of my businesses in the past. Um, but, you know, if your product is a bit more uh, mass market, then, then, yeah, you know, you've got the perfect um, source of data to start sending out personalized and targeted emails. Right. And then, so in terms of the the future and where you see this going in terms of quizzes, Maxwell, how do you see businesses using quizzes in the future? I mean, obviously, you've integrated AI already into Score App. How, how do you see businesses, coaches and so on using quizzes more and more in their business? So it, it's all about what gives you an advantage, right? Now, um, we've found that when people use Score App, let, let me start here. So uh, a typical conversion rate on a, on a landing page, whether you ask someone for their email for like a 10% discount or you ask them for their email for, to receive a, an ebook or a PDF or something like that, uh, typically converts at about 10 to 15%. So 10 or 15% of people that, that look at that, that opportunity will, will action it. Now, with ScoreOut, we're seeing conversion rates of 20 to 40%. So that's, that's a big bump in the numbers, which then uh, you know, gives you more opportunities as a, as a business owner. Yeah, that's massive, isn't it? And, and you're seeing that bump um, presumably worldwide because ScoreOut, you have clients around the world. So um, that's a, that's a massive uplift, isn't it? Especially considering once you set Score App up, it really 
I don't want to say low maintenance, but it, you know, it, the the platform really does the work for you, doesn't it? Each time you don't have to keep recreating the content, so it's very efficient. Yeah, it's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, um, and in terms of you know yourself, Maxwell, um, you're obviously an investor and you're an entrepreneur based in Singapore. Um, what are some of the piece of advice that you would give us as an entrepreneur about what you think really helps to move the needle from you know building a business oh it's a good question so um after going through the journey of building something from scratch a few times i definitely only now get involved in businesses where um a i've got an advantage that advantage uh, and the best advantage to have is in my opinion a distribution channel so i will um if i could pick between 20 businesses i'd pick the one with the distribution channel i, I wouldn't even look at anything else i wouldn't look at how much the others cost i wouldn't look at the, the the industry or the um you know whether or not it has tech involved or, or whatever i would look at the, the, the distribution channel available because for me, that's the ultimate um, risk management, right? And and also, I look at I look at businesses very differently now. So I don't look at them as in terms of, you know, what's the upside. Like um, I don't look at it as more more sales, more numbers, more dollar signs. I look at it as, you know, what could I execute <clears throat> with uh, almost what what feels like zero risk. So that is for me, the ultimate advantage, you know, and in many ways, another way to look at it is what could I execute with an arbitrage, you know, so like a, a, um, a risk-free win and then just do that over and over and over again. That's interesting. So I had one chap, um, Cody Snyder on the show and he talked about distribution being more important than product in his yeah, view. Yeah, a hundred percent. So that guy, that guy and I would be best friends. Yeah. He <laughs> runs a company called Swell AI. Uh, yeah. which is um, yeah, helping to take podcast content and make it into articles and so on. Um, yeah. So that's fascinating, Maxwell. That's your view. So you, you're actually only the second person out of all my interviews. Uh, Cody was one, and you're the second person to really talk about the impact of distribution and that that really is the core differentiator now. Why do you think that's so important? Why, why is distribution now more important than product? Uh, I think it's always been, you know, and if you look at um, the most successful, some of the best entrepreneurs in the world, uh, they have, you know, how they solve this problem is what made the difference. So I'll give you an example. I'm writing a book about this. Uh, I'm so passionate about it. It's, it's almost finished. Now, uh, so Steve Jobs, right? So Steve Jobs is well known as one of the most product obsessed uh, entrepreneurs ever to walk the planet. Um, however, when Steve Jobs launched the iPhone, he the first thing he did before he built the iPhone uh, is he went to AT&T. And he went to AT&T and he said, uh, look, there's a problem with your business model. And they said, no, there isn't. You know, we're X million, billion dollar company. And then he said to at and there is, because you sell minutes. Now, the problem with selling minutes is that there's only one minute in a minute. And then he said, I'm going to create a device for you that's going to sell more data per every minute, you know, currently possible. And, you know, that device is known as the iPhone. So he went and secured that distribution through, you know, one of America's largest telcos. Uh, gave them uh, an upside revenue model that they they couldn't say no to, and then he built the product thereafter. Yeah, I think that you're absolutely right. Of course, the um, Bill Gates story with the uh, Windows OS uh, going to IBM and getting that on there. So, absolutely right. And and of course now with Score App, 
people in terms of coming back to score app and distribution how can people get score app maxwell Let, let's bring it back as well to to what you were going to kindly offer to people um so how could people get hold of score app and how can they get hold of this amazing book that you've kindly offered yeah so let me share some of the details right so this book scorecard marketing written by my business partner uh daniel Priestley. It, it walks you through how to use this method to create um, better leads and bigger profits in your in your industry, in your business. Um, you'll go to this page here that Jim's pulling up. And the, the URL is score app, S-C-O-R-E-A-P-P dot com forward slash book. If you're in the UK, you know, we'll get a physical copy out to you. If you're not, we might need to get a PDF out to you, but just register there and then we'll go from there. And if you did go ahead with um, using our, our software, our solution, there's multiple tiers and there's a free version that you could start with. So you really got nothing to lose um, to, to get going and start generating you know, leads for your business. Max, that's very generous. And it says here, physical copies can be sent to the UK, US and Canada. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. We might have to add Singapore on on the list. I think as you're there now, we'll send you get you uh, um, yeah. connected to yeah, people yeah. in in Singapore as well. Um, Maxwell, that's wonderful. You know, I do have a final question for all my guests, and that's a book or a podcast that you're going to recommend to me and to my fellow unnoticed entrepreneurs. Yeah, wow, it's a good question. So, uh, you know, one book that I I keep coming back to. That I love to read, and I, and I rarely read a book twice because uh, I only read essentially business books. Um, is called Outsiders. So it's called Outsiders, and um, it's about I think seven or nine uh, CEOs who received who generated outsized returns for their companies. They were all I think they were all publicly listed companies, so it was the return is measured in shareholder value, and what's very interesting about this book and these, these CEOs is that, uh, you know, pretty much none of them except for one or two had Harvard MBAs, right? Had MBAs, pretty much none of them had typical C-suite experience. Pretty much none of them went through any other type of business textbook journey to get to that point and to achieve that. And they all outperformed the textbook version uh, who in the book, I think they compared it against Jack Welch when he was at GE. Uh, they, they, they outperformed him by like 15x. Wow. He's got yeah. outsiders? Outsiders, yeah. Outsiders. Yeah. So it's a, not to be confused with Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. It's called Outsiders. And um, all the backgrounds of these gentlemen was mathematicians or engineers. Okay, perfect. We'll have to get the the author's name and we'll put that in the yeah. in the show notes um because there is a novel as well called the outsiders i think so we will of course get maxwell's author there as well for you maxwell Lee, if people want to get hold of you personally how can they do that yes yeah, so i'm addicted to linkedin so you could pretty much always get a hold of me on linkedin uh so maxwell knee is my name and I'm the only one on there with that name, so I should be pretty easy to find. Great. And that's knee N double E. Okay. Yes. Uh, so that's wonderful. Maxwell, thanks for joining me all the way from Singapore. I know I've I've taken you through the, the nitty gritty of score app uh, and the quizzes, and you've got a role as chief revenue officer, so I know that you're dealing in, in bigger conceptual and bigger sales than that, but normally. So I appreciate you sort of dealing with some of the details because for those of us that, that are sort of trying to implement these smaller solutions that make such a difference to our business. It's been really useful to get from you what really is going to make it work in our businesses. So thanks so much for agreeing to come on the show to explain it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Good. Well, we've been listening to Maxwell Nee, who has shared the journey with Score App from zero to 6,000 customers, which is an amazing story. It only started in 2019. So in five years, it's grown exponentially. But also listening that we can increase the conversion rate from 5 to 10 on a website to up to 40% by using a quiz, really by listening to people that come to our websites or to our social media platforms using the Score app means that this is really such an amazing opportunity 
to embed this within our marketing strategy. So go to scoreapp.com and sign up for a free account. You've really got nothing to lose and so much to gain. And get the book because that's going to help you to understand how to gain it. So you've been listening to me, Jim James. Thank you so much for joining me on the Unnoticed Entrepreneur Show again. And until we meet again, I just encourage you to keep on communicating.